Thanks for joining us on this multi-part episode as we travel from St. Louis, Missouri, all the way to Santa Monica, California, hitting the highlights of Route 66. Today's journey, we start in St. Louis and visit the Arch. Along the way, we'll stop at Drew's for some custard and end our day in Baxter Springs, Kansas. Couldn't walk steps. You'd be in trouble. Making our way inside, we come into the entrance. We turn and go through a quick security check before heading down to the vestibules to get on the trains. It take us to the 630 feet climb to the top. We ended our tour of the arch going through the museum that covered more than 200 years of the St. Louis history. Outside of the arch, there's an old courthouse too that was built during the mid 1800s, which has a lot more United States history. But it, however, it was closed during the day of our visit. We continue to make our way to Ted Drew's for some famous frozen custard. Drew's have been making custard for over 80 years. This location here on the Route 66 opened up in 1941 and is only one of the two that remain today. Along the way, we also dropped into the gift shop uh, to look at some memorabilia, then headed on our way. Getting late in the day, so we decided to drop into the Wildwood Inn in Wildwood, Missouri for the night, and then picking up the next day for a journey to Baxter Springs, Kansas. Riding on the double lane of Route 66 has a way of relaxing you, taking you away from the freeways to the back roads of the U.S. to see all that the states have to offer. Along Route 66 is an interesting attraction, the hot and cold water towers of St. Clair, Missouri. Next 
next up on their list is Merrimack Caverns. Merrimack Caverns used to be an ammunition depot during the American Civil War. There's local folklore that the legendary western outlaw Jesse James and his brother used it as a hideout, but there's little evidence that that actually occurred. we saw the disappointing news that the caverns were closed. During the winter months, which is where we have visited, we're only open on the weekends. Maybe next time. We stop next at the Visitor Center in Cuba, Missouri. A city that's known for many murals along Route 66. We drop inside to get some more information before heading into town. Osage Trail, Cuba, Missouri. A little colder than what we'd hoped for, but it's pretty neat. Got a beautiful statues out here. Statues look to be about 15 feet tall. There are many points of interest in Cuba, like this interesting building here on the left. Up ahead, we're gonna see maybe 12 to 14 murals as we travel through the city and then head our way on out of town to the big chair. Up ahead is the world's largest rocking chair, second only to the one in Casey, Illinois. This one along Route 66 sits outside the 66 Outpost store. I think we were the only visitors there that today because it was not very busy, only one car. And I think that was the person that was working there besides herself. fudge factory. Leave your jokes at the door because there's plenty inside.
Before we leave Uranus, we're going to stop by Putt Pirates to see Megamare, a 22-foot statue in the lineup of the muffler men that dot the U.S. all over the place. Here's a front picture of him. Say hello to him when you come by. We take a quick stop in a local barbecue restaurant recommended by a local. It did not disappoint. Then we followed up with a fuel stop. What's better than a Bucky's and it's right on our way. As we attempt to find the Route 66 mural park in Joplin, Missouri, our routing system seems to take us a sort of an odd way. Going through this parking lot, navigating it back through an alley, we finally come up on the mural. downtown Joplin, Missouri. We're going to do a U-turn here to get ourselves back on Route 66. The sun beginning to set low, we have one final stop to make before we end the night. The Phillips 66 station in Baxter Springs is our target. As we go through this roundabout, you'll see where somebody recently has made a Route 66 sign out of tires and steel and not what? Pretty creative. Up ahead on our left is the Phillips 66 station. It started its life as the independent oil and gas station in 1930. Today it serves as the Kansas Route 66 Visitor Center. Unfortunately for today, we got there just a little bit too late. Maybe next time.
a nice drive through Baxter Springs, Kansas. Quaint little town with all kinds of neon reminiscent of Route 66. However, this is where we're going to take a right and head out towards Osage County, Oklahoma for a side trip to Pioneer Woman's Mercantile Store, Restaurant, and the Drum and Ranch.